All right, welcome back to another video, guys. We are building a pedal board today. It's actually already built, so I'm gonna show you the footage of me building it, and then I'm gonna run you through all the different sounds. If you've been hanging out on the channel for a bit, you'll notice I use the Line 6 Helix a lot. It's something I got back in the summer, and since then, my pedal board has been really, really neglected. It was in really bad shape, actually. So I decided it was time to put it back together. You're probably thinking, Eric, you say you're a minimalist. Why do you need a Helix and an analog pedal board? Fair, that's, that's actually a really fair question. There's something about analog pedals that you just can't do with digital. I can sit here and talk about how much I love the digital thing all day long, but something about being able to actually reach down and grab the knobs and twist them without actually having to go through menus is really nice. Whenever I'm using a traditional amp setup, I tend to go this route here instead of the Helix. Now, there's all kinds of pedal board build videos out there from really basic stuff like people just setting up, even using 9 volt batteries and a couple of pedals, all the way to guys like Corey Wong or Rhett Shaw sending their pedals and their boards to Mason Marangella, the rig doctor, to build some extravagant, beautiful board. I think this falls somewhere in between. So hang tight, I'm gonna show you guys how I put this together, sort of my thought process, and then I'm gonna run you through. Uh, here's the mess I'm dealing with currently. <laughs> so this was down. I pulled everything off of it the other day. Um, there's the guts of it. I'll talk about this in a minute. And here's a mess of pedals. And a paintbrush for cleaning them. Okay, so here is the board without the pedals on it. Let me back up so you can see it. I did build this a couple of years ago, and so my layout is actually going to stay the same, but I thought I'd run you guys through it either way. So it is a Pedal Train Classic Junior, and I'm running the True Tone CS12 power supply on the bottom of it, uh, which mounts comes with the mounting hardware. That's all well and good. This is a fantastic power supply. It powers everything I've got, including the Line 6 HX Stomp. It didn't work initially, though, so I actually had to end up flipping the polarity, I believe because this adapter somehow flips the polarity for older line six devices either way the red to the green so the polarity flip and then the different size for the line six specific devices works great and i have more than enough power to power everything i think this is the perfect size because it fits the requirements for carry on for fly dates so for me being able to carry on my guitar in the bag and carry this on that's it that's all i need to have um, you know i can show up to the gig with those two things and if i have to check my luggage and it gets lost fine i can put underwear and t-shirt in my guitar bag just in case that happens maybe a toothbrush but these are the important things now i have modified this guy slightly here you'll notice on top you can't see any of the slats that you can see back here so although i think the slats are a really really great idea and they do that because it makes it really really easy to put whatever pedals you want on and configure them however you want move them around and not actually commit um, to a permanent setup I think the downside is, especially when you're dealing with mini pedals or sideways pedals, sometimes it's hard to find a spot that they actually fit. Sometimes you want to put a pedal on somewhere and it only half fits on one of the slats or the rungs, and so it's not super secure. I just never really liked that. And for me, I decided on a layout that's never really going to change. Everything is going to stay where it is as long as this board is in existence. So what I did to modify it was I just cut myself a piece of plexiglass and I painted it black. You can see some wear on there now from the last couple of years of use. Some scratching, but I still think it looks better than a piece of clear plexiglass. You could definitely use plywood if you wanted to as well. The reason I went with the plexiglass was just thinking like a little more waterproof and maybe a little bit more durable long term. Uh, and it's been super, super great. So you'll also notice what I've done too for cable management is I've just drilled two holes in the plexiglass here where I've channeled all my cables on the back and then run them up through just the two holes. So this took a little bit of planning. That was the hardest part of this board here, but I was able to do this and make the, the cables the correct length I needed uh, to run to each pedal specifically. And then something else I did was I labeled the back too. Having them labeled is awesome because if something goes down, you know exactly what to pull. You're never second guessing it. And when you have a board like this, that's a little bit more permanently put together, that's just gonna make life a bit easier. Sign of a good pedal board, kind of like a Dairy Queen Blizzard is you can flip it upside down and it still stays in place. All right, let's just jump right into the board. So first pedal in the chain is the Digitech drop right here. So all that pedal does is simply take your sound and just drops it down one semitone at a time. It can go as far as one octave. You can run it momentary or latching, meaning you can press it once like this and it stays on or 
you can just press it quickly and then let it go. So if you wanted to just change one note or something, which I've used it for in the past as well. Typically, I just use it for a one and done kind of thing where I just set it up half a step down. Here's what it sounds like standard tuning. <laughs> Here's what it sounds like with the drop on, one half step down. Now, it's not perfect, but honestly, I think it does a great job, especially live in the context of the mix. As long as you're not playing anything too crazy, it's gonna get the job done. Like I said, I use it mostly live, but there are situations where I'll use it in the studio. I've found, in my experience, the best tool in the studio is the one that's at your fingertips, the one that's ready to go, and a lot of the times, this is ready way faster than having to take a guitar and drop it into a different tuning or something like that. So actually, one of the more common ways I like to use it is to simulate a bare tone. I currently don't own a baritone guitar because I'm not buying gear for a year. I can't get one. Do I still own a baritone? Yeah, I do, but my life's no worse not having one. You know, I'm just as happy using this for now. It gets the job done. So here's what it sounds like as a baritone. <laughs> So it works, but it's kind of woofy sounding. Obviously, when you take something and drop it down that low, you're adding in a lot more low frequency response. The way that I like to adjust that is with one of my other favorite pedals, the EQ. Take a look at the curve on the EQ right now. I've got the bass cut a little bit and I've got some mids bumped a little bit. The idea there is just to clean it up when I kick that on. So I don't have to deal with anything on the amp or the guitar. All I need to do is just bump my EQ and it cleans it right up, makes it sound really good. <laughs> While we're at it, let's talk about some of the other effects on this board I might use in that situation when I'm recording a single note kind of baritone line. Tremolo. Tremolo sounds awesome on that and some nice drippy spring reverb. So then you wind up getting something like this. <laughs> Next in line are the overdrives. So currently I'm using this Minimalist Musician Custom Drive. Now, I know I said I wouldn't buy gear for a year. I want you guys to know this was in the works prior to that being announced. Also, I'm gonna give this away. I wanted to put it on the board for now. I wanted to run it through its paces, make sure I like it before I commit to it. So I had two of them made. One of them I wanted to give away to my thousand subscriber. I actually chose intentionally not to make a video about it because I didn't want a bunch of people subscribing to the channel just for the potential to win free stuff. I really, really wanted to say thank you to everybody who's been here for a while for being a part of the community because I really, really appreciate it. I know I say it at the end of every video, but I really mean it and I want to show you guys in ways like this or any way I can. Speaking of that, if you guys are enjoying the content, you've been here for a while and you don't want to miss anything coming out, I'd super appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, you can ring the bell, even more importantly, you can like this video or you can comment on it, share it with your friends, anything like that really, really helps me out. Now that the cat's out of the bag about the giveaway, since I'm giving this away, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet, but it's going to be based on some of those metrics like comments and subscribers, so if you did need a little bit of incentive, maybe that's it. Okay, so in drive one, the Minimalist Musician Drive, which is a Nobles ODR1 clone with an added bass knob. My buddy Kevin at KO Amps made it for me. I'm really pumped about it. I really like the extra ability to add the bass in. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> Oh, that sounds good. Anyways, that's like my lighter stage one overdrive. Mwah. Stage two, I've got a Zen Drive type clone made by Kevin again. This is no longer available, unfortunately. And just to let you guys know, I do switch these pedals out literally all the time. I'm constantly messing around with the overdrives. Everything else in the board sort of stays the same. So it's set up for a little bit of a chunkier sound like this. <laughs> The beauty of the two overdrive system like this is the ability to stack them. So I can have my lighter drive, my heavier drive, or both. Now 
when you add the boost you get all kinds more combinations as well so here's the clean sound again now with the boost I'm running that at 18 volts, truthfully, because I ran out of space down below. Uh, it sounds good at both 9 or 18. I guess at 18 has a bit more headroom. I've got it set up. There's a dip switch inside, so I've actually got it set up. It is boosting when it's on, no matter what. I do actually have the volume on that all the way down. It's still giving you a bit of a boost. There's way more in there if you want. So on top of the combinations we've already looked at, I can also take my Stage 1 drive. And I can boost it. Stage two drive with a boost. Or if I want all out mayhem. The orange pedal hanging out up top is my compressor. I love compressors. Uh, I tend to play a lot of country music, so I've kind of been an always on compressor guy, although I have changed that lately. An example of where that really shines is in kind of like more quacky chicken picking playing. <laughs> trim again by KO amps really really great trim pedal I know that the HX stomp has all kinds of trims in it but this to me is just like it's just like the best trim going <laughs> I know it's the least exciting thing on the pedal board, but the TC Electronics Polytune is a great tuner. It's really easy to see. It's very accurate, and I'm just running it out of the tuner output of my volume pedal. I know the HX Stomp tuner is awesome, but I like this one a little bit better, and I find it so much easier just to pull the volume pedal back, and then I'm able to tune. Also, it frees up the foot switches on the HX Stomp. I don't need to use one of those for my tuner. Speaking of the HX Stomp, I'm using that for most of my modulations, reverbs, and delays. And I'm actually running it off of a little MIDI controller here. You can see the Disaster Areas DMC Micro. It's a little two button MIDI switch. So the way I've got that set up, there's two modes. When I'm in the standard mode here, it's got the red button on. You can see uh, 42B, which matches the preset that I'm on. Let me do this so you guys can see that better. So 42B matches here. And if I want to bank up or down my presets, that's all I have to do. Now I can put it into a second mode by pressing and holding here. It goes into a utility sort of mode and it's got tap tempo built in right here. So that's controlling the HX stomp, but you also probably noticed that the Strymon delay tap tempo adjusted when I hit that. It's because I'm running out of the utility jack of the micro and into the Strymon. It's actually controlling both simultaneously. Strymon's just got a quarter note delay on it right now. And now I can add in was a dotted eighth delay, I can tap them both, and now they wind up in time together. Now I'm using the HX stomp mainly just for effects, not for amps. However, it can be used for an amp sim too, and that's how I used it in the beginning. So what's really cool about this is when I go out on a gig where I don't know whether I'm gonna be on in-ears or monitors, I don't really know from gig to gig what it's gonna be like. This is usually the board I bring because if I'm on in-ears, I like to use the amp modeling in the HX stomp. That way I know exactly what it's gonna sound like. I have control over the room reverb, and I'm not stuck with a 57 haphazardly placed on some half working Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. On the flip side, if we're using monitors, I don't wanna take this coming through my monitor along with everything else. The monitor guys probably got some sort of EQ and compression or whatever going, it's gonna make this not sound that great. And then I have all of the same sounds coming out of the same thing competing, and I don't like that either. So if we're on monitors, instead of running the amp sims, I can use this just for effects, and that's all good. Some other examples of effects I might use on this would be like a phaser. <laughs> and different reverbs. Like I mentioned, the Strymon I use for sort of more basic delays, typically shorter quarter note delays. So something like this, maybe where I'm just trying to add a little bit of depth to an arpeggio part. Or if 
you just want some slap back. <laughs> The last thing I think that's really worth talking about is the volume pedal. So the way I've got mine set up is it comes after all my overdrives, but before any delays or reverbs. Now, the reason I do this is twofold. One, if I need to pull my volume back on stage really quickly, if it's too loud for something, and I'm just playing some rhythm parts, I can just back off in the volume pedal ever so slightly, and it's not really going to change my overdrive tone that much. So here it is full open. <laughs> back it off a bit as opposed to if you had the volume pedal in front of that it would do something similar to what your guitar does where it really cleans it up Now, the reason I put it before the delays and the reverbs is to have the option to do some really nice swells like this You notice when I pull the volume pedal back, it doesn't immediately cut those off. It allows those effects to trail. That way you never completely lose your sound. Even when you bring it all the way back, the notes you played before continue to ring. Once you get proficient at it, you can do a really good job of playing through chords that way, where everything sustains, but you're not getting chords overlapping from one to another. So that's my do it all ultimate pedal board. I'm still pumped on this board. It's essentially the same board I've had for a couple of years now, minus a couple of little things. and. I really don't want anything else. Now, while we're on the subject of pedals and pedal boards, I made a video a little while back about why I think the Line 6 Helix is the ultimate all-in-one guitar tool, and you can check it out right here. As always, guys, thank you so much for your time and attention in such a noisy world. I hope this video has inspired you to put together your ultimate dream pedal board at home, and until next time, I hope you get out there and make some music.